credited as being one of the first violinists to use electric amplification techniques on a violin, Stuff Smith was undoubtedly one of the great swing violinists of the early 20th century. Stuff Smith was an African-American violinist born Hezekiah Leroy Smith on August 14, 1909 in Portsmouth, Ohio. He grew up in nearby Massillon in Cleveland, where he absorbed the influence of jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong. Smith cited Louis Armstrong as his primary influence and inspiration to play jazz, and like Armstrong, was a vocalist as well as instrumentalist. Smith began playing violin as a child. At the age of 15, he left home to make his way as a professional musician. In 1926, he became a member of the popular Alfonso Trent Band, where he remained for four years while working on the side with other bands. In 1930, he settled in Buffalo, where he formed his own group. And in 1936, he went to New York for a long and highly successful residency at the Onyx Club. His band established Smith's reputation as a forceful, hard-swinging jazz man with a sense of humor. Smith performed with the likes of Coleman Hawkins, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and later Sun Ra. After being signed to Vocalion Records in 1936, he had a hit, Eyes a Muggin and was billed as Stuff Smith and his Onyx Club boys. He recorded for Vocalion in 1936, Decca in 1937, and Varsity in 1939 to 1940. Eyes a Muggin became a moderate hit, but another recording of that year turned out to have longer lasting resonances. Use a Viper was covered by vocalist Fats Waller in 1943 and enjoyed renewed popularity. Stuff Smith also saw great success outside of his music as one of the writers of the song It's Wonderful, 1938, which was often performed by Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald throughout their careers. He was also featured in several numbers on Nat King Cole's trio album, After Midnight. Smith's Onyx Club years were historically significant. He pioneered the use of the amplified violin, and in the words of jazz historians Lynn Lyons and Don Perillo, he quote, developed a bluesy speech-inflected style that was quite distinct from the European-influenced approaches of the other swing era violinists, end quote. I got some Venuti records and they were pretty, Smith was quoted as saying in jazz, the rough guy, but they didn't push me enough. I used my bow the way a horn player uses his breath control. And I may hit a note the way a drummer hits a cymbal. Smith also took vocals on some of the band's often outrageously humorous songs. In 1938, Smith took a hiatus from live performing. He appeared in the film Swing Street. His hiatus took the momentum out of his New York career. He dissolved his band after a series of disagreements with flares and other industry figures. However, Smith bounced back with a trio that performed in New York and Chicago in the 1940s. And he briefly took over world-renowned jazz pianist Fats Waller's band after Waller's death in 1943. Smith made several trio recordings in 1943 and 1944. But by the late 1940s, his career seemed to be in decline. And in the 1950s, Smith suffered health problems brought on by years of heavy drinking. This did not stop his fellow musicians from admiring him. He moved to California and continued to perform on what was said to be a centuries-old Guarneri violin. Among his fans was big-time jazz producer Norman Granz who teamed Smith with bebop trumpeter Dizzy Gillespie and pianist Oscar Peterson for a recording on the Verve label in 1957. Smith made several albums for Verve and continued to record until shortly before his death. In 1965, Smith moved to Denmark and performed actively in Europe. Like so many other jazz musicians, he found European audiences were appreciative of his music. He settled in Copenhagen 
and made several recordings in Europe. One featured Swedish jazz violinist Sven Asmussen, who, like several other young violinists, had been mightily influenced by Smith's style. Smith fell seriously ill while on tour in Paris. Doctors placed him on the critical list due to his battered stomach and liver. However, Smith recovered and continued to perform. Smith died in 1967 in Munich, Germany. Many fiddlers and violinists alike say that they are heavily influenced by the violin style of Stuff Smith. He is remembered by many as one of the greatest violinists who created a new way and new genre of playing. <laughs>